Go to Jeremiah chapter 8, and I'm going to read verses 20 and 22 to start out with. Jeremiah chapter 8, and verses 20 through 22. So we're in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20, we read, The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black, astonishment hath taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? The Lord in prayer. Dear God, we are so thankful for what you did for us on the cross of Calvary, dear Lord. And uh, we think of what would be our eternal estate if not for the love of God. And so we're so thankful, dear God, for that. And if there's anyone here today who has not taken this most precious and high of opportunities possible by trusting Christ as Savior, I pray they would today, Lord. I pray that this would be their morning of salvation. Lord, we'll see this message today. You provide what's needed. And yet we can choose not to partake through faith. So I pray that as we look at this balm of Gilead today, that we would make the spiritual applications and it would register in every individual heart represented here for the lost or in need to be saved, for Christians to make decisions in their lives, to have those fruits we looked at this morning of repentance come forth in their lives. And that greater honor and glory and fruitfulness can be brought forth in your holy name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know how old I was at the time. I think I was pretty young, but in the town I grew up in, there was a thing that everybody's talking about. It had been in the newspapers of a little boy. So I kind of registered that being a little boy myself at the time. And that he uh, needed a life-saving operation. He needed a life-saving operation, and the information was that his parents' family were not allowing that to happen because they had a religious belief that they did not believe in blood transfusion, and you have to have a blood transfusion in order for this operation to take place. And so the thing in the community was, we're, we're, were they, were they going to allow, were the authorities going to allow uh, this to happen if this young boy did not receive the life-saving operation and ended up dying? And I remember as a young child being confused about that and also frightened about it, that how could someone, you know, mom and dad, just let them die when they could be saved through the operation? I just couldn't understand how anyone could allow someone they love to die when there were medicines and physicians that could save his life. In verse 22, we see three rhetorical questions. They're rhetorical because the answer to all three are obvious to the audience, or at least the audience at that time. The answer to the first two questions were yes. Yes, there was balm medicine, speaking of medicine in the region of Gilead, it was famous for it in Jeremiah's day. And yes, there were, or there was a physician in Gilead who could heal the people through the use of the medicine. So the fruit of answering the first two questions also make the answer to the third obvious. The health of the Jewish nation was not recovered because the people were not using the medicine that was readily available to them, and they were not going to the physician who could use that medicine to restore their health. So the same situation, only spiritually speaking. The medicine was available that they needed. The physician was available that they needed to be recovered from their spiritual, even deadness and sickness. But they were not partaking. They were choosing not to partake. And the, the eternity life, eternal life saving medicine that they needed. So let's understand that Jeremiah is talking about physical health here. He's speaking of spiritual health. And today, just as in Jeremiah's time, there are countless lots of people in bad spiritual health. There are people everywhere with 
sin sickness. This multitude includes both the lost and without Christ, and the saved who are living sin-filled lives. And although there is always balm in Gilead, spiritually speaking, and although the physician is always in, so few people are recovered because they refuse to use the medicine and call for the physician. Surely no one in this auditorium would allow their child or even themselves to needlessly die when they could receive a life-giving operation, whether it required a blood transfusion or not. Take advantage of the medicines, the medical procedures, the, the certified, qualified physicians who could easily save their lives. And yet, also, most likely, there are people in this very room who are either dying spiritually or who are in seriously bad spiritual health who have refused the balm of Gilead and have turned their backs on the healing power of the great physician. But even if this were not true, certainly everyone here has loved ones and friends who are easily headed to hell because you have yet to give them the medicine and direct them to the physician who can save their eternal souls. So as you may have guessed already, the title of this message is entitled, There is Balm in Gilead, and the Physician is in. So let's look at this Balm of Gilead. We see the Balm of Gilead is God's word. The balm of Gilead, spiritually speaking, is God's word. In verse 9 of chapter 8, it says, The wise men are ashamed. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? They rejected the medicine. They rejected the balm of Gilead by rejecting the truth of God's word. They have rejected God's word. God's word is the medicine of the soul. It provides us the remedy that we need for spiritual healing. Indeed, it's the word of God that provides uh, the, the, the remedy for being spiritually dead, to, for, to bring forth spiritual life, as Romans 10 and verse 17 tells us, so that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's the word of God that's the balm of Gilead. The Lord desired greatly to see the Jewish people healed of their sin sickness and their, their backslidden ways, and yet they refused the remedy prescribed by his word. I tell you, the Lord greatly desires, greatly desires for people to be healed of sin sickness today. It says in the Bible, he's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repent. He so loves the world, he so loves the mankind. We need to listen to the remedy prescribed by the word of God and be healed. The sin sick Christian needs to follow the remedy of confession and repentance prescribed by God's word to be healed by going to the great physician with a, a broken and contrite heart over sin and seeking his forgiveness, and he will be quick, as, he, as we see in the story of the prodigal son, to have reunited fellowship with the repentant Christian. And the person lost in his or her sins also needs to follow the remedy prescribed by God's word by trusting in the precious gospel of Christ, receiving Jesus Savior this very morning. In Jeremiah 7, verse 3, the Lord pleaded with the Jews. He said, Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. You see, the judgment of God is soon to come upon them, and the, and the invasion of Nebuchadnezzar and the, and the Babylonian great and powerful Babylonian army, and God's bringing forth his judgment upon the Hebrew people for century after century, for the most part, they had re rejected uh, so much uh, of God's uh, word and, and God himself and were engaged in, uh, in uh, uh, the blasphemies of, of idolatry against the Lord. And, and times even being so bad that they were even engaged in child sacrifice. They had been so uh, consumed with their uh, idolatry and uh, under the influence of, of Satan. And that God had worked again and again and again in various ways to try to cause the people to repent, to, to amend their sinful ways, that they might be sealed as individuals and as a, as a nation spiritually. And, but they just refused the medicine. They, were, they refused to yield to God's word. They refused to yield to who he is, the great physician, the Lord. And so they refused the balm of Gilead. They refused the physician. The same Almighty God promised us His word that we'll place faith in Christ and in Christ alone for salvation, that we'll spend eternity in a glorious promised land, 
sheltered by his hand forever. So he told them, if you just come to me by faith and, and, and to repent and, and uh, things will be right and, and, I'll, and I'll hold off, I'll stop the judgment from coming upon you and I'll, I'll put my hand of protection over you and you will be safe here in the promised land that I, that I promised to Abraham and his descendants long ago. The Lord promises today, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. For he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes him should not perish, have everlasting life. He's saying, hey, you can avoid the eternal judgment of separation from me in hellfire if you'll just receive the balm of Gilead. You'll just believe my word, believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, and ask me to save you, and I'll save you. And you'll be under my protective hand for all of eternity in a glorious, the most glorious of promised lands, heaven itself. This verse shows us that those who consider themselves wise says in verse 9, the wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed and taken, they have rejected the word of the Lord. What wisdom is in them? For the wise, the, the political leaders, the religious leaders, the priests, the educators, the scribes, and other such like that, shame. in reality, they were not wise, even though they were in positions of, of to reflect wisdom and to lead the, the people, they were not Wise leaders, they were foolish leaders because they rejected God's word. They, they, they were, did not live in fear of God. They were fools instead of the wise. They rejected the, the position. And so we need to be wise today. We need to be truly wise today and fear the Lord. Not be foolish and make decisions and act as if there is no God or word of God. That's what a fool is. So being foolish is, but the wise are those who heed God's word and, and live by God's word. And because they were not doing that, they, they claimed to be wise. They had this, the positions that were for wise people, but they were actually fools because they rejected the word of God. They rejected the word of the Lord. It says they rejected the balm of Gilead. But no one refused, refused the healing power of God's word this morning. The Jews have been taken in by imitators of the truth in verse 8. How do ye say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain may he it. The pit of the scribes is in vain. They made the word of God in vain in their lives because they chose to believe the lies of charlatans. Those who were in positions of religious leadership, those who may have been in the position of priest, but they were reciting the traditions of man and things of their own carnality rather than the word of God. They are seeking for the people to live by the dictates of carnality of the world and really the dictates of satanic influence rather than by the influence of God and his word. And because of that, they call themselves wise in their position to They do not follow it. So they're not wise and they reject the word of God. Even in the midst of their advocation of insidious idolatry and other blasphemies against God, the priests, the teachers, the scribes, and Jeremiah, they arrogantly claimed that the law of the Lord was with them. That's what false teachers do. I don't care what cult it is, what false religion it might be. They'll use the word of God. But they'll misuse it. They'll make it a private interpretation. Instead of just, this is what the Bible says, that's what it means. This is what the Bible says. But this is what it really means. <laughs> just reject what it says right there in black and white to come up with their own tradition. And then the uses of man and they say they get other books that they put in, is in equal place or really in authority over the Bible. And they'll come up with their own Bibles. 
which will be in agreement with our false doctrines. The charlatans. How we should seek to get the gospel to those who are leading in the false teachings and the false gospels. How we should be with love taking the gospel to those in these cults who go around preaching Satan's lies and are helping towards the multitude staying on that wide way that leads from destruction straight to hell. How we should love them enough to try to bring them the truth that they might go to the Lord. These pseudo theologians are Satan's pawns and he's using the masses and pulling them away from the truth of God's word. And there's so much of that going on in professing Christianity. I mentioned the cults, but so much of professing Christianity today is filled with the traditions of man, whether old traditions or traditions of our time today of a recent years and decades. So much of the tradition today, the new tradition is to no longer call sin, sin, and things that the Bible just obviously calls uh, sin, wickedness, evil, to identify that now as being good. And so we think of the lost world being those applied to as calling evil good and good evil. But if you look in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul there is prophesying about the church of our time today. And the church of our time today, so much of it is calling good evil and evil good. False teachings. And those, as I said, we should be getting the gospel to these people. We should get the truth to these people because don't you know that the deepest, deepest uh, abscesses of the lake of fire are reserved for those leading the multitude with their false gospels to the eternal fires of hell. Don't allow the truth of God to become vain in your life because you're believing the lies of charlatans. One thing about our church that we're sure about is we tell people, believe this book. Check this preacher out. I want people to go and even today in the Jeremiah after the sermon's done sometime today or tonight or this week and see whether it was, that, was it accurate preaching. I want my preaching to, to be judged by God's word. I seek with all my heart to preach God's word. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We expound upon God's word, but we just take it, what it says, what it means, as we're bringing forth today. Taking the different parts of this chapter to demonstrate that the Lord's speaking of spiritual healing and applying the balm of Gilead, as we see, as we see mentioned here, to the word of God, that they rejected the word of God and caught climaxing this portion in verse 22 with that with those questions. So it does not take someone with a doctrine in theology to be able to see what the word of God is saying or to just scripture interpret scripture right here in this chapter. So don't allow the truth of God to become vain in your life. Reject Satan's charlatans and open your heart wide to receive the genuine balm of Gilead. Let the balm of Gilead mend your spiritual wounds. Let the balm of Gilead calm your soul. Let the balm of Gilead lead you to eternal life. Let it be ministered in your own heart and then help it to be ministered in the hearts of others. Today I'm trying to be used of God to help minister the balm of Gilead, the word of God, into the hearts of others that the Holy Spirit might use it and that people will receive the balm and will have its healing powers as people engage faith in the Lord. And then the physician of Gilead is the Lord. Verse 6 of chapter 8. The Lord speaking here to his prophet, and he says, I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his own, to his course, as the horse rushes into the battle. So the Lord hearkened unto their hearts and waited to hear words of repentance but none came. One of his most choice servants, one of the most powerful prophets of God ever, Jeremiah, was among those whom he used in this last time as the harvest was about ready to pass. <clears throat> time would be run out and they would no longer be able to have escape from the judgment of God. Throughout the book of Jeremiah, the Lord reminds the people of how he worked to try to mend their spiritual sickness. For centuries, he brought forth 
at least some righteous leaders among them to lead them in the ways of righteousness. He had sent prophets to them to proclaim his holy word, says in Jeremiah. He had chastened them as a loving father many, many times. God did all these things and more to try to heal their sin-sick ways, but for the most part they had rejected the physician of Gilead. They refused the treatment that God offered him through faith in his word. Although our numbers are dwindling quickly, God still has preachers in this day who will stand solely upon the word and preach about sin and the need to repent from it. That there seem so few who respond with an inclined ear instead respond with a stiff neck. God's chasing has also come upon us again and again, even though we may have made ourselves too spiritually dense or too prideful to recognize it. That there seem so few who have the wisdom to respond to that chastisement by correcting their sinful ways. So we need to respond to the Lord that He hearkens unto us through His Word and Spirit. Maybe Christian God's dealing with you today about a life's decision He wants you to make. Let him hear for you, from you today. Let him hear from you. The, the physician is in. The balm of Gilead is available. Respond. Let it be applied to your heart and life. It will change your life in the most revolutionarily and wonderfully ways. Eternally changing decisions. Don't respond with a stiff neck and rebellious heart. But rather respond with an inclined ear and a willing heart. And lost persons, God deals with you today concerning your eternity. Concerning your need for salvation through Jesus Christ. Let him hear from you as you seek freedom from the bondage of sin. Come forward to this altar during our invitation time and call upon the name of the Lord. You'll have people that can help you to come to Christ utilizing his word. The physician, the great physician, Jesus Christ, is here even today to heal the brokenhearted, provide deliverance, to give sight to the spiritually blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, as the Bible speaks of him. There's only one great physician who can help the sensitive Christian and the lost sinner. He is Jesus Christ. Don't refuse him. Don't refuse his treatment as he hearkens to your heart. Receive the balm of Gilead. And go to the great physician, and you will be healed. And our last point is, partake of the balm of Gilead, and let the great physician heal you. Verse 20, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Don't allow the time of harvest to pass in your life. You don't have no more chance anymore. Until it's too late for you. Dear Christian, don't continue in rebellion until the time of harvest has passed. And then you find yourself at the great white throne of judgment, filled with shame. Through living as such an unfaithful steward for the Lord Jesus Christ to save you from hell. Respond. And there's some of been saved and they've been putting off baptism, church membership, or full surrender. Don't keep putting it off. The time of harvest will eventually pass. Don't continue living needlessly and worry and emotional pain until the time of harvest has, has passed. Lord wants you to have peace, the past understanding. He wants you to have joy unspeakable. It takes living by faith. Receive the balm of Gilead and go to that great position, and he will heal you. While there is still time. While there is still time. Lost soul, don't keep on putting off Jesus Christ until the time of harvest has passed for you. There may be another time in your life, there may be another, another time in your life when God is dealing with you as strongly as he is right now in your heart. There may be, there may be time in your life forward that he's dealing more strongly with you, but we can never know. Lost person, you can never know. You can never know if you're going to have another chance. Chris, you can never have, have, know if you have another chance to repent and get things right with the Lord. 
We don't know when the time of harvest is going to pass for us. It could be this very, very day. Happen so quickly. Just go on normal at it. Remember before last, I was home after church, was watching some football after dinner. Got an archive. The Lord chose to keep my life going, but He just chose you. It doesn't matter. You can come to church like this preacher, preach your heart out and be all full of energy. And for the afternoon in the emergency room, get ready for a heart procedure. I don't have a guarantee when the harvest is going to be passed for us. There may never be a Sunday or even a tomorrow for you to get another chance. How many are suffering in the eternal flames of hellfire right now? For at one time in their lives, one time in their lives here on earth, they knew they needed to be saved. They knew they needed to be saved. Yet they chose to reject the balm of Gilead and to reject the Lord position, the spiritual position. The time of harvest has passed for them. The deepest regret of those in hell has to be when they heard the truth, those times they heard the gospel and yet rejected it. The time of harvest. And in verse 21 it says, For the hurt of the daughters of my people and my hurt, I am black, astonishment hath taken hold on me. That saying I'm black is talking about mourning, he's in mourning. Mourning is the sinfulness of the people, or the idolatry of the people. It was a term for, for being in mourning. And being Hebrews, uh, people of that culture would uh, uh, wear sackcloth and ashes, so the darkness of ashes, of, of bringing a symbolism of their mourning. So that's where the blackness comes in and sees a mourning over sin. This day when so many refuse to call sin, sin, there is often no shame. And among those who call themselves the Lord's elect. And in God's people, as we see here with the Jews, get to a place where they fail to blush any longer concerning even the most wicked sinful behaviors. But God's people should be broken hard over sin. Should be broken hard over sin is Jeremiah. Jeremiah was one of the weeping prophets. A lot of time that's because the people didn't listen to his preaching and he is preaching but it's also because he was broken hard over the sin of the people. These people should have been broken hard over their sin that he was preaching to, as he was. But instead, they were proud about it. Proudly, in Jeremiah, they proudly proclaimed to him, we're not going to worship God, we're going to worship the Queen of Heaven. And not only are we going to disobey God and go to Egypt, we're going to force you to go to Egypt with us. They were just full of rebellion against God and pride, and they thought they were spiritual. Oh, they were the spiritual ones for worshiping the Queen of Heaven and their own right They were the spiritual ones for for uh, for rejecting the, the preaching of God's word to follow their own what was right in their own eyes. Well, the same thing going on today. So much of what is called Christianity. Should be broken heart over our sin, like Jeremiah was. Should be ashamed about our sin, as was Jeremiah. God's people should mourn over sin, as was Jeremiah. Rather than winking at sin, we should set our eyes against it. Rather than glorifying sin, we should fight against it. Rather than joining in sin, we should flee from its sinister embrace. Not pat ourselves as being spiritual because, oh yeah, that's not really sin. That's just, that's just those closed-minded, narrow-minded Christians. Just like these folks do. This doesn't change. 
same kind of wise people. Their positions and their great numbers of followers. So that these had great numbers of followers in their foolishness and their wickedness and their charlatans and their preaching their own word and their own traditions and calling the word of God to be the wrong way to go. It just repeats itself, repeats itself. The same devil motivated it, the same devil then, the same devil today. We have no excuse to fall for it, but we have the word of God. That we are supposed to steadfastly stand by no matter what the cost. Verse 22 it says, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? He recovered from spiritual illness. They were responding to God's word and coming to the Lord for help. It's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing to die needlessly when there are medicines and physicians which can easily heal the disease. What a tragically foolish thing to do to refuse to be recovered and choose death instead. No, I'm not going to have that life-saving operation. Nope, I'm just going to die instead. <coughs> well, as grave as that might be, that's not nearly as grave as I hear that gospel. I've heard that gospel even many times. The gospel of Jesus Christ. But I'm not going to receive it. That's worse because that's the person's eternal fate. Not just this life thing, but the eternity. Eternity in hellfire. In the lake of fire. So choose life today. Choose life. Don't choose death. Don't choose eternal death. Separate from God forever in hellfire. Choose life. Christians choose the things of spiritual life. The things of fellowship with God. The abundant life. The fruitful life. The righteous life that the Lord so deserves for us and demands for us to live. So there is balm in Gilead, and the physician is in. Please partake. Partake of the balm of Gilead today. If you're lost, receive the gospel of Jesus Christ by faith. Trust Christ your Savior. Christian, the medicine, the balm of Gilead is the word of God. And it says there in 1 John chapter 1, and verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We'll have a right relationship with God. We have to bring the glory and honor to him that we ought to be. There is balm in Gilead, and the physician is in. Let the Lord in prayer. God, I pray today that the people represented in this room would not be as the people who heard Jeremiah's preaching. Those people refused to partake of the balm of Gilead. They, they refused to humble themselves unto uh, the physician, unto you, Lord and get right with you through repentance. May not one here today be able to be identified with that stiff-necked crowd. But Lord, help us to humble ourselves to you and have soft hearts toward you. For Christians to seek to get things right with you, to make those decisions that we ought to make in our lives. And for any lost person here today, Lord, to make that decision that Hopefully in my heart of hearts they realize their only hope for eternity is to receive Jesus as their Savior and that they would not fight against that in pride and embrace it in humility, marveling at your incredible grace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, stand please and as a piano. Our plays, we respond to the invitations that we have received.